Did you know that the Muslims once fought a war with North Korea? You see, in the late 800s, Japan began expanding to the West, invading and colonizing countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, China, the Philippines, Vietnam, Myanmar, and of course, Korea. And at the time, Korea had, at that point, been unified as a kingdom for hundreds of years. And the split between the North and the South actually came later in 1945. World War II had just ended, Nazi Germany had lost, Japan had two nuclear bombs dropped on them, and America and the Soviet Union had won the war together and were now the only superpowers left. And questions were being asked about what to do with the Japanese Empire. Some countries gained their independence from Japan while other places were given to China or the Soviet Union and Japan itself was occupied by the US. But Korea was a little bit different. It was too important to the US to lose but it was also boarding the Soviet Union which caused some tension. So they agreed to split Korea in half. The US would administer South Korea with a liberal democratic government and the Soviets would administer North Korea with a communist government. They drew a line in the middle and called it the day, but for the Koreans, it wasn't enough. The situation amongst the Korean people was extremely volatile. Korean leadership was polarizing and each side of the split was calling the other side illegitimate. Families were split apart with Democrats going to the south and communists going up north. And then skirmishes started breaking out along the borders and there was fighting and bloodshed and people were dying and political tension was rising. And the US and the Soviets were starting the Cold War. Countries around the world were choosing America or the Soviet Union. Everyone was being put into one camp or another and the countries that wanted to remain neutral, they were often forced to choose. And then something crazy happened. In 1949, China switched sides. The US backed government in China had now been overthrown and communists were in power and they were right next door to Korea. And the US was panicking. And while all this was happening, Turkey on the other side of the planet was also in a dangerous situation. The Soviets were too close for comfort and they were already planning an invasion of Turkey. And so they asked the Western powers if they could join NATO, whose original purpose was to be a united army against the Soviets. The US said yes, but on one condition, they have to help fight against the Soviets in North Korea. So in 1950, the Korean War began and soon after the Turks joined the war, sending a total of 15,000 soldiers. And because many of them had experienced fighting the British in World War I, they were immensely effective. As an example, in the Battle of Kumyong Jung, the Turks fought directly with the Chinese and the Chinese lost almost 500 people. The Turks lost 12. One Korean diplomat said that without the aid back then, South Korea would not exist today and that our people are always grateful to the Turkish people. But the Turks didn't just fight. They also helped with humanitarian aid and even ran schools for Korean orphans with some Turks even adopting some of them. And one of the most famous stories was that of Ayla, a Korean child who had lost both of her parents in the war. A Turkish sergeant took care of her during the war but eventually they lost contact when the Turks went back home. They actually met some 60 years later and they even made a movie about it. The Turks also helped spread Islam in Turkey with many of the locals becoming Muslim who went on to build a makeshift masjid in 1955 out of an apartment in Seoul. And this group later grew into the organization called the Korean Muslim Federation which built the Seoul Central Masjid in 1975 on a plot of land that the Korean president had given them himself. Today Korea maintains a strong friendship with the Turkish people and many Koreans come to Turkey for school or work or even vacation. And there are even many Korean YouTubers with Turkish language channels. As one Korean ambassador said, Koreans see the Turks as blood brothers. Who knew that Koreans could grow such a strong bond with Muslims some 7,000 kilometers away just because they both happen to have the same enemy. Like a fall for more Muslim facts.